Can you add the height from the big one, add the height from the small one? Um, other trick functions. So y equals tan of x. Why not? Or s of x equals oh, tan yeah, of x. I know, tan I know tan you saw the picture. Now, tan x, I'm not going to be as precise as I was with the sine graph, so I'm just going to do it shorthand. We're going to do it with two pictures. Here's 1, 0, 0, 1, negative uh, 1, 0, 0, negative 1. Draw it enough times. And the other picture we're going to use is the 45, 45, 90. That's it. So this is 1, 1, the square root of 2. First thing, tangent is equal to sine over cosine, also known as y over x. So think of this as y over x as the unit circle, not as y and x in the formula. They're totally different. Wait, so what? y over x is coming from the unit circle. has nothing to do with this equation over here. We'll come okay. back to it. Where this is cosine and this is sine. So if I do y over x for the first coordinate, what's its answer? Zero. zero. So I'll set up my little table, and I'll put zero here. And then, oh, well, hold on. x, tan x. So y. Uh, hold on. I want to redo that. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Let's redo this. Just this far. Put I'm zero here. Oh, you're crazy. So, it's really <laughs> funny. You have to. I, admit. I believe it. I believe it. <laughs> so, when x is equal to zero, tan x is also equal to zero. zero. My problems come here. If I go up to um, pi over 2, it's undefined. If I go back to negative pi over 2, it's undefined. So the only part of the graph I'm going to be able to graph is between pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. And then the other side. So at pi over 2, negative pi over 2, this thing is undefined. And at pi over 2, this thing is also undefined. So that doesn't give me a lot of information. At pi, it is 0. Well, I got that. Now you got a 0 is 0. Well, at Angle zero, tan of zero is zero. One, two, one, two. Here's negative pi over two. Here's positive pi over two. These are vertical asymptotes. Why are they vertical asymptotes? Because it's undefined at those two values. That's the main reason you get vertical asymptotes. I only know one point so far, and that's the origin. So the other point I'm going to get is from 45 degrees, pi over uh, 4. So this dash here that I have is really pi over 4. What's the tan of pi over 4? Tangent is opposite over adjacent. It's 1. So it'll be up here someplace. Now, since it starts going in this motion, where is it going to end up going? Because it's coming close to an asymptote. It's only going to go up. So this thing shoots up that asymptote, and it never ever crosses it, never ever touches it. That's right. Now on the other side is negative pi over 4. Eventually it won't run out, like I'm serious. Well, I know. So negative pi over 4 is here. It's in the fourth quadrant. It's coming so down 45 four. degrees. And it would be 1 over 1 still, but since it's in the fourth quadrant, it is negative, negative one. 1. So it comes down here someplace, awesome. and we have to continue our pattern that way. It kind of looks like x cubed, kind of, except x cubed goes for ever in both directions. This one is being bounded by pi over 2 and pi over 2, uh, negative pi over 2 on the left and pi over 2 on the right. But this is also a periodic function. So it should go off forever in both directions. The problem is, uh, if this is pi and this is 3 pi over 2, then you can do it again. What happens at 3 pi over 2? It won't stop. It won't. Well, at 3 over pi over 2, what happens to the tangent? 
it, 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 it comes undefined. Uh, it becomes undefined because it's negative 1 over So there's another zero. vertical asymptote. There's another vertical asymptote. What's the tangent of pi? Well, the tangent of pi is over here. And it's 0. And that's 0. So it'd be smack dab in the middle. And if we look at it, it's going to shoot up this way. If I plugged in, um, what would that be, 3 pi over 4 on the right? You. That would be positive, I think. Let me think. Pi over 2 pi. No, this would be 5 pi over 4, which would be positive. And over here would be 3 pi over 4, and that one would be negative. So you'd be over this way. Oh, yeah. So this graph just keeps picking itself up and copying itself down every pi. The period here is pi. pi. It works exactly the way sine and cosine work, except instead of setting it equal to pi, 2 pi, you'll be setting it equal to pi. The other thing that's different is in the middle is where the zero goes. Where sine and cosine, it goes off to the far left. It's the first box. This one is going to be the middle box that we're going to put it in. So far, so good? So what if I ask you to graph? Uh, for example, uh, f of x equals uh, 2 tangent of 3x minus pi over 2. Let's keep it safe. I think this will work. We'll see. So, first question. Amp? Two. None. Why? How can it be two? What's an amp mean? Well, the highest the curve gets and or the lowest. How high is this then going? I infinity. Down. Where is it going down? Yeah. Negative infinity. This has no amp. There's no high point and low point. So when I put a two up here, it means absolutely uh, nothing. Wait, so it, doesn't, it won't like stretch it or anything? Well, it'll make it a little bit taller, but the general shape won't change. It'll look just like <coughs> that. The general shape. If I say 2 times tangent, it looks like that second green graph. I don't have a point saying where 1 was to begin with. Um, so now all I need is a period and a phase shift. So you take the inside, go off to the side, and you say 3x minus pi over 2 is equal to pi. pi. Sine and cosine get 2 pi. Everybody, well, tangent and cosine, uh, tangent will get pi. <gasps> Solve for x, same the process. Oops. Keep the things separate so you can see which one's a translation and which one's a period. Divide by 3. Pi over 6, pi over 6, and pi over 3. And instead of taking the period, that's a period by the way, instead of taking the period and dividing it by 4, because I wanted 4 equal cuts, really all I need is 2. The left part and the so right pi part. Over six. So we're going to divide this by 2. Which is pi over 6. And we're going to get pi over 6 cuts. Why are we dividing by 2 again? Because okay. with the sine and cosine, there was four pieces. Uh -huh. This one only has two, a left and a right. That's all it has. Because okay. we're really only then, looking then, at this rotation for the curve. So we're ignoring right. half of the circle because it gets undefined at the top and the bottom. So when we do our table, oh, let's answer our questions. The period is pi over 3, and the translation is pi over 6. So when we do our table, it's only going to look like this. And will you always divide by 2? For a tangent, yes. And sine and cosine, you're always dividing by 4 because you're doing the full rotation. This is only doing half. So put 0 in the middle. Put 0 in the middle. Do you divide the period by 2 to get the The left, the right. You divide by two because you're only dealing with half a circle, two quadrants. She's asking where you got the phase shift. Is it? Oh, the phase shift yeah, is here. Yes, it's right there. Okay. Phase. <laughs> so zero in the middle. Tangent is the only one that starts with zero in the middle. Everybody else starts with zero on the left, and I mean everybody else. So tangent is a little unique. The left is going to go left. Pi over 6, so this will be negative pi over 6. <coughs> On the right, it goes over another pi over 6. But then you have to deal with the phase shift. 
So I have to add on five sets. Now, this pi over six is different than this one. This is the cuts. This is actually the shift. So pi over six plus negative pi over six is zero. Zero plus pi over six is pi over six. And pi over six plus pi over six is pi over three. And then we can graph them. Here's um, one pi over six, pi over six, pi over three. And uh, one pi over six, two pi over six, three pi over six, that would be pi over two. So that's normally where it would go to that pi over two place. What is what? What is what? Oh my lord. So these, the outer ones, are going to be your vertical asymptotes. So these are your S's. Wait, the zero and the pi over three or the negative pi over six? The, zero, the bottom number, zero and pi over three. So one of your vertical asymptotes is going to be hidden from you. It's going to be the y-axis. That makes it the hardest one. So if you're ever graphing this, go beyond the axis with dotted lines so you can actually see where they are. If you put it right on the axis, it kind of disappears. And the other one is going to be at pi over 3, so it would be here. Now, is the tangent positive or negative? It's the positive tangent, right? It's 2 instead of negative 2. If it was negative 2, normally it would go this way. If it was negative 2, it would come this way. So it makes it, so when there's a 2, it makes it... Just taller. No, no, makes it taller. But you're never going to see it. But it's it like goes... compressing. No. These bounds are not because of the 2. It's gotten compressed already because it used to be pi over 2 to negative pi over 2, and I've squished it down into this little part. Mm -hmm. One third as big. Mm -hmm. So this is what compresses it. The 2 is just going to make it twice as tall, but you're not going to see it because it goes off to mm -hmm. infinity. Does that make sense? That's like adding 1 to infinity. What's 2 times infinity? Infinity. infinity. To infinity. <laughs> and beyond. Uh, so the graph is going to go right through the middle. And on the right hand side it goes up. On the left hand side it goes down. Yeah, he did. Can you find the top? Which one? The top numbers? You take your period, you divide it by two, and that comes up with pi over six. Zero starts in the middle, and you go pi over six to the left. So the top, you um, keep adding pi over six? Pi yeah. Six in this case. Well, in this case, you're going back pi over six, and you're going forward pi over six. So you never, ever have to add it. Because you're just going to the left of it and to the right of it. So it will be after pi over six. Oh, the next number? Yeah. It would be another pi over six, which would be pi over three. That's why I put it there. But not for the top number. It became the bottom number. Why did you put pi over 2 at the end? Oh, because I was going to graph another period. I always graph two periods with tangent. I don't care if you Do go left or right. To? Yes. <laughs> so if, the, when, if this is pi over 2, the next mark would be 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6, which is 2 pi over 3. This would have a dotted line. That would be an asymptote. The graph would be going right through pi over 2. Yeah, yo. And it would be coming down and be going off. That's what I would want. Two, at least two periods. I don't care if you go to the right or go to the left. It doesn't matter. the pi over 2 pi over 3 from adding pi over 3 plus pi over 6, right? Uh, yeah, this is 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6. But whenever you're doing the pi's, it usually turns into a counting game and then reducing. I guess we need to do one more, but we're going to do it differently. We're going to do a similar graph, which is cotangent. And this is where the confusion starts. Because they look very, very familiar to each other. Very I have, close. I have a question about this one. Go for it. Okay. For the chart, you added pi over 6 because that's the phase shift. That's the phase shift. Okay. All right. When you do the pi over 6 over here, I didn't mean them to be same, but it turns out that when you do the pi over 6 over here, it's because it's half of the period. Okay. But this pi over 6, whatever it is, it's a phase shift. Uh, let's look at cotangent. Unit circle again, really quickly. 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 1, 0. When is the cotangent undefined? 
Uh, on the x-axis. On, on the x-axis. Yeah. So it's undefined at zero degrees, and it's undefined at um, pi, 180 degrees. Are we going to do secant? Mm -hmm. Yeah, real quick. They're not that hard. So we get these two points, and it's undefined there. So the only place we're going to define our first period, instead of the quadrant 1 and 4, we're going to do quadrant 1 and 2. 1 and 2. So we're going to drag our cosine from 0 degrees all the way to pi degrees. So pi it's going to flip. 180 so degrees. So it's going to be this way, right? What's that? No, no, that's tangent. It's undefined here, and it's undefined here. So I want a continuous graph, so it's only going to be continuous between there. Huh? Tangent was high and low. So we did quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. Negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. So here we're just going to go 0 to uh, pi. Now when we do it, uh, we'll do a little table. Here's x. Here's cotangent of x. We're going to start at 0. And we're going to work our way up to pi. Bless you. Bless you. So at 0, it is undefined. Undefined. And at pi over 2, it is 0. And it is undefined. So those are the vertical asymptotes we're going to get. Yep. So when we graph this, here's um, pi over 4, here's uh, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, and pi. I'll just do the main period. Now on the main period, this thing is undefined at 0. I need those to tell me if I'm going up or down with the curve. It's going to go up towards the asymptote or down towards the asymptote. Okay. At pi over 2, this thing, oh, I'm sorry, and pi is also the vertical asymptote. Get those in there. So this graph is going to be squeezed in between these two vertical asymptotes. Oh, easy. When you take cotangent, cotangent is x over y on the unit circle. So on the unit circle, it becomes x over y, which is 1 over 0, and you can't divide by 0. So that happens here, and it happens here. So at 0 and pi. And it gives you those vertical asymptotes on the graph of cotangent. Now at pi over 2, this thing is equal to 0. zero. So a smack dab in the middle. Now we've got to use our brains. What is the cotangent of pi over 4? Wait, what? what is the cotangent of pi over 4? Oh, it's 1. Pi? So it would be up here someplace. And this part of the curve has to go that direction. It can't it's turn around like and come back like down. It's making it negative. Huh? Is it like it's making it negative? Uh, kind of. Negative on the tangent and the little shift. Yeah. You have to move it to the right a bit. But that's why they're related. And cotangent of 3 pi over 4, which is in the second quadrant, negative. is negative 1. So it would be down here someplace and you'd get... Ooh, ooh, wrong curvature. This way. You get that type of curve. So it looks almost identical to the tangent curve. And this is where you're going to get confused. Does it start high and go low? Does it start low and go high? Does it go through pi over 2 first? Or does it go through the origin first? And the only thing I can tell you to remember it is tangent starts in the middle with 0. Everybody else starts on the left. That's the only big difference that you can tell. And then you just have to remember... Tangent is the only one that starts with zero in the middle. All the other functions start with zero on the left in the table. Okay. In this table format. Right. If it's zero on the left, then it's coming this way for right. cotangent. If it's uh, zero in the middle, it's going the other way. Right. It's the only thing you can memorize. Yes. So that's cotangent. Not a big deal. It does the exact same thing. Period is? Pi. Pi. And that one's a little bit more obvious to see because the distance between here and here is? Pi. So the period equals pi. So the period for cotangent and tangent is pi. The period for sine and cosine is? 2 pi. What's the period for cosecant and secant? <laughs> no, it's 2 pi. It's the exact same period as sine and cosine because they're just the reciprocals of them. Yeah. Right. So it's like, it's just flipped again? So let's graph this one. Is it just flipped again? What? Oh, no, no, it gets weird. Because I know that on this one, it's, it's flipped and shifted. Let's do um, 2 
secant. Um, I don't know. Hold on a second. I'm going to steal one out of the book. Mm -hmm. Oh, there are more in here. Take one out. Seriously, there are more. I wish I could have. I don't have my notes with me. I don't know why. So two secant of three x minus pi over four. I want to graph this. Go ahead, Dan. Now, technically, you should be able to do this, but I have to give you a few hints. Hint number one, the secant function is equal to what? Cosine over one over cosine. One over cosine. So this becomes two times one over cosine of 3x minus pi over 4. So what's the problem with the blue writing? What can I not have? possible here. Zero. Can't have zero in the denominator. So anytime the cosine of this thing is equal to zero, zero I get undefined. Which puts on a graph. Tangent. Uh, we stop it. <laughs> asymptotes. Asymptotes. <laughs> vertical asymptotes. So anytime this thing is equal to zero, this will give us vertical asymptotes. So you want to solve for zero for a long time? No, not yet. We don't need to, because we already know when that happens. So what I'm going to do is a two-step process. Number one, you graph the denominator. Just graph it. That includes having an amplitude of 2. That will transform into a secant in one easy step. So how do I graph this cosine thing? So I want to graph cosine 2 cosine of 3x minus pi over 4. Take the inside, set it equal to 2 pi. So you go 3x minus pi over 4 equals 2 pi. And how do we get what a fraction? Secant is equal to 1 over cosine. Okay. So secant of this mess is equal to 1 over cosine of that mess. Okay. That's all. Sure. <laughs> and I'm really concerned when cosine is equal to 0. I'm also interested in when it's equal to 1, but we'll get to that later. So after you solve for x, what does this become? Pi over 12. Plus 2 pi over 3. Plus 2 pi over 3. Shift the pi over 4 over, divide by 3, that becomes pi over 12, and then you get 2 pi over 3. <coughs> what do I do with 2 pi over 3? Take a fourth of it, so 2 pi over 3, multiply it by a quarter, you get? Why are we multiplying it by a quarter? We want to cut it into three pieces. For the circle. Five or six. Whenever you're dealing with sine and cosine, you cut it into fourths, the period. So you can come up with your up, down, middle parts. All right, and then of course our translation is pi over 12. So our cuts are going to be pi over 6. Our translation is going to be pi over 12. All right, so you do your little thing. One, two, three, four. And it starts at zero on the left. Everybody starts at zero on the left except for tangent. The first cut is going to be pi divided by six. Pi divided by six. Second cut is going to be pi divided by three. The next one is going to be pi divided by two. The next one is going to be one pi over six, two pi over six, three pi over six, four pi over six. Two pi over three. Two pi over three. And it should end up at two pi over three because that is our Period. Period. Which our period it starts at zero and ends at two pi over three. Now, what do I have to do to each one of these cuts? I have to add pi over twelve to it because it's being shifted to the right pi over twelve units. So zero plus pi over twelve, that's easy. Pi over six plus pi over twelve. Pi over four. This becomes pi over twelve, that one's two pi over twelve. Three pi over twelve is pi over four. Pi over 3 plus pi over 12. Well, that's 4 pi over 12 plus five. 1 pi over 12, which five is pi 5 pi over 12. This one is 6 pi over 12 plus 1 pi over 12. 7 pi over 12. And this will be 9 pi over 12, better known as 3 pi over 4. Okay. Woohoo! But remember, this is all cosine stuff that we're talking about. But cosine is related to 
secant. So when I graph this, uh, kind of. We're going to start with pi over 12. So how many do I need? Nine of them. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. The important ones. Pi over 12. What? Pi over 4 is the next one. So this is pi over 12, this is um, 2 pi over 12, which is pi over 6, 3 pi over 12, pi over 4. So every two marks is a important angle. Every two marks. 1, 2, 1, 2. The next one is? 5 pi over 12. 1, 2. The next one is? 7 pi over 12. The next two? 3 pi over 4. All right. All right. So yeah. If you change all of the pi's over 12, this is 1 pi over 12, 3 pi over 12, 5, 7, and 9 pi over 12. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Gotcha. Okay. You're looking at me like, The amplitude is? A screen. 2 up. And <laughs> two down. He so confident too. <laughs> yeah, he did. Really. He was like uh, three. Now I'm gonna graph the cosine graph in green, but it is not the final graph because I uh, really so want to graph. First graph in. It's gonna be cosine. I'm gonna graph this cosine curve exactly the way it should look. So at pi over twelve, which is where I'm going to start. Well, what? Cosine is going to be too high, so it's up here. Then at pi over 4, it's going to be in the middle. And then 5 pi over 12, too low. And then middle, and too high. And I'm going to continue it on just a little bit more. There's going to be a mark over here at this 9 pi over 12, 11 pi over 12. And then I can back off over here to the origin, and it actually comes back to the origin. It should drop down. Yes. What? Um. Are <laughs> you like delay reaction? What are the five or six? Five or six, five or six. What are the? Like, These are the original cuts without the phase shift. We took the period, cut it into quarters. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Okay. Gotcha. You're speaking so much gibberish. Okay. okay. Right a period is a full rotation of the sine curve. Okay. The sine curve goes so are we going to graph four, those points? Because I feel like we're going to graph We don't need to graph them. It goes through four quadrants of the unit circle. So I cut it into four equal pieces. So each one of these pieces does a quarter of a rotation. Okay. Okay. After I do the quarter of rotation, the black ones, I have to add on pi over 12. I plot just the green ones. Okay. Okay. So this is the cosine graph. And notice I'm only putting it in dotted form because I could care less about the cosine graph. I want secant. Now, here's the trick. Remember what I said before. Over here, when this thing turns into zero, it turns into a vertical asymptote. So when does it turn into zero? At pi over two. At definitely not pi over two. No, is that four? Um, yeah, At pi over 4, we're going to get a vertical asymptote. So we're going to get a vertical, I'll put it in dark here. Vertical asymptote. Where else? Wait, ask the question. 7 pi over 12. I said, when this cosine is equal to 0, we said this at the beginning, it forms vertical asymptotes because we're dividing by 0. And cosine at pi over 4 is equal to 0. Why is it back at 0? Wouldn't it be at negative pi over 12? Huh? No, 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 no. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Uh -huh. Be quiet. <laughs> yeah. Is that better? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, where else is it zero? I don't know. Seven pi over twelve. I don't know. <laughs> I can just find your mistakes. Where else is it zero? <laughs> All the way over here at eleven pi over twelve. And if we want, we can go back to negative pi over twelve. Thirteen pi over twelve. Hey, Mary Catherine was right about something. Yay. <laughs> okay, so here comes the main graph. It's going to be in blue. If you are a reciprocal of, say, a half, 
It would be two. It would be two. Yes. So it's going to, instead of be down here, it's going to go up there. <laughs> so all the low points are now going to become high, high points. So it just so flips over. If, well, it kind of flips over. It does a weird thing like this. So you get these U shapes inside of these vertical asymptotes. So and they either face up, the and they never ever touch zero. And down here, you would start here and go down. And over here, you would go up. So the blue graph is secant. So when you see graphs that have vertical asymptotes, and you have a plotted point that goes down on one side and up on the other, it does like this. This is either secant or it is. Cosecant. What is this a negative? It just flips it upside okay. down. Um, it's two the top ones go down and the bottom ones go up. It's but it follows the cosine graph perfectly. It's 230. It is? I don't have the quiz, so I can keep on going. No. But we have to leave. Oh, well, bye. But, um, I'm just letting you know. Yeah. It'll okay. be a lot quieter. So, I mean, um, all you have to do is just flip all the ones that are pink. Hmm. You go to the top of the cosine graph, you plot a point, and you draw a parabola up. But and it's bounded by these asymptotes, so it's not technically a parabola, but the shape is generally the same. If you're at the bottom of the curve, you draw a parabola facing down in between the vertical. Unless it was normal, just push Okay, if you're at the top, go up. If you're at the bottom, go down. I know, I like if all the things were turned upside down. Maybe if they're all turned. Well, then he would be down here and he would Oh, yeah. Yeah. But then the cosine curve would have been upside down, too. Because it would be negative and it would flip, so it would drop back the flipping floor. Ah. So, given that little bit of information, you should be able to grab what? You can tell the film. Or they can email me and be proper. Let's grab this one. There's no way in heck I can grab this. I do my own. So far, so good. Yeah. Or are you just copying me? Okay, nice. <laughs> I'm already ahead of you. Oh, you're ahead of me? Zero, pi over four, pi over two, pi over two, three pi over four, three pi over four, pi minus pi over three, minus pi over six. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? Three? Oh, dang, I copied the wrong one. <laughs> I'm going to say six. No, I got it right now. I'm going to leave it there. For real. Okay. I'll leave it here. You fix it. So, Um, for cosine, you do because it's got that weird V shape, and if you don't do it, you lose the curvature at the top. Yeah, you don't have to. Right. And if you can start a cosine off with the right shape, you should be fine. Nice. I like going backwards and forwards just to be clear. <coughs> but one period of this would be one down, one up. That's a period. One down, one up. Let's see here. This is. Negative pi over six. This one is pi over twelve. Pi over twelve. Pi over three. Stop it! I want to do my own calculation. Excuse me, Mister. 
This is 3 pi over 6. That's 2 pi over 6, better known as pi over 2. That's 9 pi over 12 minus 2. That's 7 pi over 12. 10 pi over 12. And that's 6, 5 pi over 6. six. All right, that's, yeah. don't go any further. Try to figure out how to get the picture right. Yeah. If you're not good with fractions, oh well, learn. <laughs> Common denominator. Let's see if we do pies over 12. 1, 2. Just put our critical points and not do like that. I'm kind of precise, which is better known as five pi over six. Do you hear me? I heard you. You can put general four, but you better have because right. like on homework, I did uh, general shapes. I did pretty much with, for graphing purposes. You want to tell me if it's right? I can already see. Here, Your curves. Yeah, but you, you get that. I, I get the general yield. Like <sighs> Alright, so let's see here. Oh, yeah. now hold your holes. Here's three halves. I still have to get my three halves in here. Here's negative three halves. Oh, that actually came out nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. What is that? It's positive. Right? Yeah. Oh, you're oh, So here's the sine curve. Did we do the ones where they get zeros? Mm -hmm. You have to. Otherwise, I won't know what the heck you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So here's your sine curve. It starts at negative pi over 6, flows through pi over 3, and then yeah. ends up at 5 pi over 6. I read it 10 pi over 12. I don't know why. Wherever it hits that middle line, you're going to get a vertical asymptote. It doesn't matter, though, because it's just a reciprocal of everything you see here. So it starts at 3 halves high, that's the amplitude, and then it just goes up because it's positive, and down because it is negative. And there's your graph of 3 halves cosecant 2x plus pi over 3. So if you can graph sine and cosine, you can graph secant and so those, those are kind of the same, same could they be used? Well, they're like sine and cosine. Yeah, they're exactly the same graph. There's just a little shift to them. And they're also co-functions. This is oh, C can. That's all the same. Because I, I know how you were precise about it. In the beginning, I just, I, I knew I had to do more. I did like a, like a little down. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. I did open down like you did and then I put four. As long as you don't have like pi over six being this big on one side and pi over six on that no. side being this big. Then it's just yeah. Homework! <laughs> Never heard of it. Homework, what's that? Never heard of that.